Thank you, Madam Chair. It is such an honor to have the opportunity today to meet with you and other members of the Special Political and Decolonization Committee. At the most recent session of the Committee on Information, I was really heartened by the support that member states expressed toward the work of the Department of Global Communications and our efforts to reach people in all corners of the world. I offer my profound gratitude to Ambassador Christian Espinoza, Chair of the Committee on Information, as well as to the Vice Chairs, Angelito Nahan of the Philippines and Darren Camilleri of Malta, whom we've just heard from, and for their able stewardship of the Committee's 43rd session. I would also like to thank Devita Abraham of Trinidad and Tobago for facilitating the discussions on the draft resolution. Distinguished delegates, it's reassuring to see so many of you gathered together today. Uh, what a drastic change from last year when this committee was forced to meet entirely online in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I'm traveling now and I'm not, um, I'm fortunately not there to meet you in person, um, but I believe the fact that we can meet now in such a flexible manner is a byproduct of all of our efforts to ensure that the United Nations continues its vital work even amid such challenging circumstances. In the case of the department that I lead, uh, our work is shaped by the UN Global Communication Strategy introduced early last year, just before the pandemic became a full-fledged crisis. The strategy serves as a blueprint taking a data-driven and audience-focused approach to communications to build awareness, but also to generate empathy and to drive support for the UN agenda. The pandemic, of course, has been top of that agenda. Through 2021, the organization working with member states has continued its efforts to help stop the spread of COVID-19 and mitigate its catastrophic impacts. While most of the insidious impacts has been the emergence of the global, sorry, one of the most insidious impacts has been the emergence of a global so-called infodemic, initially around the virus itself, but now increasingly around the vaccines as well. In a world that is more online than ever before, we are finding that disinformation and misinformation can spread at lightning speed. Their reach is not confined to any particular language, country, or demographic group. And the stakes could not be higher. In a pandemic, these kinds of lies can mean the difference between life and death. As the Secretary General made clear when he issued his report last month on our common agenda, and I quote, we must make lying wrong again. His report calls for a global code of conduct to promote integrity and in public information. It also appeals for the development of an empirically backed consensus around facts, science, and knowledge, while acknowledging the critical right to freedom of expression everywhere. Yet the disinformation phenomenon is vast and the resources available to tackle it have been minimal nor is it confined to the COVID-19 pandemic. Disinformation and misinformation plagues many issues, especially in those countries beset by conflicts or where minority groups have been targeted with hate speech. For many years, it has been especially prominent in the climate sphere. As a result, the department is moving to establish a dedicated capacity both to track and to counter mis- and disinformation across a range of topics. The good news is that we have identified a path forward to counter false information and narratives. The department's verified initiative, which I believe you're all familiar with, that we set up last year in collaboration with the Social Impact Agency Purpose gives us a replicable model of how to create and distribute large volumes of shareable digital contact that are tailored for and targeted at national or local or even community audiences. 
at last count, more than 2,000 individual pieces of content across 60 plus languages have been generated, produced, and disseminated through Verified. And those 2,000 have been then um, extended to even much larger numbers as they were translated um, and adapted in our, by our country teams. And the impact is due in no small part to the efforts of our global network of UN information centers, as well as the communications officers within resident co coordinators offices. Just to give you an example, in Panama, the UNIC helped launch a digital, digital campaign on vaccine safety and equity that has reached 10 million people since its debut, debut in August. Another example in Sri Lanka, a so-called myth busters campaign tackled false information in three languages. I could give you countless examples of how we rolled out this campaign in national and local levels and had incredible impact. But mindful also of the outsized role that big technology players um, are playing in the spread of mis- and disinformation, the department is also engaging with many of those companies to take measures to help curb the problem. And one example that, I mean, that they've done many things that have been helpful, both by elevating our content, but also flagging or taking down information that is da damaging. But I'd like to give you a recent example um, that we're quite excited about. Google um, has agreed following discussions with our department that whenever users search for the term climate change or climate action, what they will find is UN content, which is displayed prominently in the search results. Uh, this is going to be also rolled out in English, French, and Spanish this month, just in time for COP26 at Glasgow, with more languages to follow. Um, so this work with the, the platforms is absolutely vital. Uh, in that vein, we also welcome the resolution adopted by member states that acknowledges our efforts on Verified and proclaims the week starting 24 October as the first annual global media and information literacy week. And just to say that DGC and Purpose are co-organizing event, an event on the 28th of October to look at the lessons learned from a year and a half of implementing Verified. Um, we will uh, demonstrate what worked and, and where we think uh, Verified could serve as a, a model also for member states and other institutions. So I invite all of you to tune into that um, and we will share the details of where and how next week. Madam Chair, whether it is the response to COVID-19, uh, the climate crisis or the race to achieve the sustainable development goals, the department aims to position the UN as a source of authoritative, engaging, attractive, and accessible content that is human-centered, but also solutions-oriented. This kind of storytelling, particularly around key campaigns, increasingly appears across the multilingual platforms managed by the department, from UN news and also UN social media accounts, to also our publications such as the UN Chronicle and also the UN website. The results are impressive, I have to say, and clear. Uh, the UN channel on YouTube, to take one example, has experienced an audience growth over this last period of 150% and now has about 2 million subscribers. Um, also to note the climate action part of the UN website received some 260,000 page views in August alone. Similarly, the Awake at Night podcast, which I host and which tells the individual stories of UN staff members working across the system and in the field continues to exceed our expectations. Uh, we've had over 3.1 million unique downloads um, in the year to July 2021. And the podcast new season has included staff working in areas as diverse as disability, human trafficking, outer space, and also um, in Afghanistan. 
In many cases, our storytelling efforts are enhanced through close partnerships, including with member states. I'd like to point to the highly successful Service and Sacrifice Peacekeeping Campaign, which showcases individual troop and police contributing countries, kicked off its, which kicked off its third phase in June with a new round of member states. That campaign has now covered 52 countries with content in nine languages. A separate digital campaign on youth, peace and security, where DGC supported the work of the Department of Peace Operations received a global marketing award for the way it highlighted the role played by young peacekeepers. New products are also being launched all the time to drive audience interest and to offer hope. In August, UN News launched No Denying It, which is a climate podcast focused on green solutions that has already been downloaded and listened to by more than a half a million users. Partnerships are another critical vector for advancing the UN as a source of credible information. From June through September, the Dag Hammarskjöld Library organized the second global open science conference where more than 4,500 attendees connected online, accumulating in an outcome document that stressed the importance of transparent science. So just a good example of how we're also focusing on different types of audiences um, in, these, in these approaches and activities and programs. Meanwhile, um, amid a rise in hate crimes worldwide, the department launched the multilingual hashtag fight racism campaign with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights ahead of the high level meeting of, on the 20th anniversary of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. A series of character sketches of inspirational figure, figures fighting xenophobia, discrimination and intolerance were featured in an immersive microsite that received 50,000 views and 5,000 interactions during the high level week. Also on October 26, I will have the honor to moderate a global conference of education ministers convened by the UN to examine how to deal with hate speech through education. This year's SDG moment, which kicked off at the General Assembly's high level week is also fresh in our memories. Thanks to the participation of the music group BTS who spoke at the SDG moment and recorded a video at UN headquarters um, and, uh, in the General Assembly Hall and sat down for a television interview with me, the UN was able to connect with a vast, youthful, global audience that are really normally unfamiliar with the 2030 agenda and bring them into our world. The figures are extraordinary. The BTS music video recorded at the UN has more than 31 million views and the SDG moment itself has been seen by at least 6.6 .6 million people. Now these numbers indicate just how the UN was able to effectively make its agenda more relatable to the public and raise awareness about the goals. I would really like to extend my thanks to the permanent mission of the Republic of Korea for their efforts to make these extraordinary impactful moments happen. Distinguished delegates, our communications around the goals are not just confined to key moments, but rather represent the sustained and con us sustained and continuous effort. And one way is through the SDG media compact where media and entertainment companies worldwide pledge to leverage their resources and creative talent in support of the SDGs. The compact now has 200 members with the most recent, including the South, South Africa-based multi-choice network, Japan's Kyoto News Agency and the US conglomerate Conde Nast. Members receive access to specialized content about the goals opportunities for interviews with UN officials and experts, and can partner with us in activities such as the SDG Media Zone. 
At the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics, six virtual media zones were held and streamed globally thanks to a collaboration between Unix Tokyo and Asahi Shambun. Indeed, that Unix's multi-pronged efforts to increase public understanding of the goals have been particularly successful. A survey early this year shows that more than 54% of Japanese and at least 70% of the country's teenagers are now aware of the goals. Madam Chair, our communication results are informed by a systematic and strategic approach that prioritizes advanced planning so that we find the best moments and opportunities to make an impact with audiences. A dedicated cell leads this effort, coordinating both within the department and beyond to ensure streamlined planning both year round and during critical periods, such as the high level week last month. This is also true for our crisis communications. And as you know, we have been in a state of crisis uh, for quite some time with the COVID pandemic. And this is compounded by so many other uh, crisis situations around the world. So under the aegis of the UN communications group, DGC has created nimble teams and mechanisms to manage the communications response to the latest, latest crises on top of the crises, such as those in Afghanistan, Haiti, and Ethiopia. The department has brought together relevant offices in this regard across the UN to meet regularly to ensure that we have common key messages and that these are shared across the system so that we're all speaking uh, in one impactful voice and that the various UN entities are aligning and also amplifying each other's content. Finding ways to innovate or improve on what we are doing is another key element to our enhanced performance. A new mobile TV studio at UN headquarters installed with the generous support of the permanent mission of the Netherlands gives the UN an opportunity to introduce more modern and dynamic visual backdrops to much of our content and televised moments. To those of you who were at the SDG moment, you saw what that looked like, um, and perhaps um, you've, seen, you've seen it streamed and online and other occasions. It's really um, a fantastic studio. Also to mark International Youth Day, the Secretary General's Envoy on Youth convened the first ever Youth Lead Innovation Festival in August, welcoming more than 6,000 young people for virtual interactive discussions about the SDGs and the recovery from COVID-19. The pandemic has made it necessary for the department to adapt and tailor some of its programs amid the various travel restrictions and protocols. While guided tours at the UN headquarters in New York and Nairobi remain curtailed and focused on virtual events, visitor service operations in Geneva and in Vienna resumed on a smaller scale last month. The Riham Alfara Memorial Journalism Fellowship was conducted as a fully virtual program for the first time this year. Despite the limitations, the program still provided valuable professional opportunities to 19 fellows from Eastern Europe, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And I have just, the Secretary General just met with them today, and I have to say he was incredibly inspired by their commitment um, to journalism, but also to continuing to cover the UN and the SDGs and taking their learnings from these very valuable three weeks back to their countries. On a similar note, um, we continue to produce online exhibitions in connection with international days and activities. Four exhibits on topics such as sustainable development, plastic pollution, humanitarian action, and peace and security were introduced between June and September, which have been collectively viewed more than 45,000 times. I mean, this online dimension has also enabled us, this enhanced online dimension, to bring our exhibitions to many more people. A department publication from my window, Children at Home During COVID-19, was also distributed worldwide and published in print and digital formats, receiving at least 4 million online views. 
The student observance for the International Day of Peace last month also went virtual as the young participants discussed how to build a better world post COVID-19 pandemic. Distinguished delegates, last week the department disseminated across the UN system new guidelines on how to include and represent persons with disabilities in our communications and how to make our communications accessible to all as well. The guidelines prepared in close consultation with both the disability team and the executive office of the Secretary General and the International Disability Alliance will be made available in all official UN languages. Advocating for gender equality and creating gender specific content remains high on our agenda and is mainstreamed through our communications priorities and outreach. And we've also ensured that our department walks the talk. The results of the 2020 UN system-wide action plan on gender equality and the empowerment of women shows that DGC met or exceeded requirements for significantly more indicators than the average for both the UN Secretariat and the UN system at large. We will continue to ensure that women's voices and gender perspectives are reflected in the critical issues that the UN communicates about. Lastly, please let me share with you that some of our, some of our current efforts, Expo 2020 Dubai, which has just begun, represents a vital outreach opportunity. Through the celebration of international days, thematic weeks and special programming, the UN's presence at Expo will invite visitors to engage in the powerful story of the value of multilateralism. Ahead of World Food Day tomorrow, the department has teamed with Sony Pictures, FAO and the UN Foundation to launch a digital campaign featuring the animated character Peter Rabbit and his friends. Campaign messaging promoting fruits and vegetables and the merits of shopping locally has already reached 42 countries in 11 languages and the hashtag Peter Rabbit Food Hero has generated nearly 3,700 social media posts to date. Next Thursday, just ahead of UN Day, the annual UN Day concert will be held at UN headquarters. Thanks to the support of the Republic of Korea, this year's concert will feature a combination of classical and K-pop music. I hope as many of you as possible can join us for that, either in person or online. Mr. Chair, BTS, our proud guest at the SGG moment last month said, quote, we thought the world has stopped but it continues to move forward. Every choice we make is the beginning of change. It is the mission of the Department of Global Communications to support this positive change by providing factual, reliable, and engaging information through channels that reach people everywhere. No matter the obstacles we encounter, the department will keep moving forward with your support and collaboration. Investing in communications is really more important than ever in this world in crisis and in this fractious world. I thank you for your time and attention today.